Okay, so the first way we're going to be selling game passes to the player is with proximity prompts. To do that, I already have a part set up here and I'm going to go into it and create a proximity prompt. From here, you can customize whoever you're liking, however you want it. I'm just going to go to action text here. I'm going to change this to purchase. So this will be the text at the top and then hold duration. I'll take it, uh, change it to a second. I'm going to leave the key as uh, E and then I'm going to change the object text to, let's say, sword, because that's what I'm going to be purchasing. And that's the bottom text. Uh, line of sight, you can, most of the time you can toggle this off. It depends if uh, if a wall is in front of the prompt, you don't really want the prompt showing through the wall. So that's what uh, line of sight is. I'm just going to leave it on actually, because there's nothing really uh, covering the part here. From there, I'm going to go straight into creating a local script. It doesn't really matter where you put it. Uh, as long as it's a started UI, started pack, or started player, any of the folders in here will work. I'm going to create the local script, and then the first thing I'm going to do is define our marketplace service. We're going to be using the marketplace service to actually prompt the game pass. And then we're going to get the proximity prompt service, which we can use to know when a prompt is triggered. Service equals game, get service, proximity prompt service. And then from there, we're going to make two more variables, one to define our player, game.players.local player, and another one to get our example, our, our part in the workspace, this here. We're going to make another variable there. We're going to go game.workspace, and then we're going to actually use wait for child, which lets the part load in in time. Because some, uh, if we didn't have wait for child there, sometimes Roblox just doesn't load parts in time, and that will cause an uh, error. So yeah, using wait for child is good here. Uh, we're going to move to line 7 and from here we're going to actually use our proximity prompt service that we defined earlier and we're going to use prompt triggered connect function and the cool thing about this function is it actually provides us the prompt the one that's actually triggered so then from there we can check is our proximity prompt the example and the proximity prompt inside it i spelled this correctly is this over here the same as the one we triggered? If so, we can continue and actually use our marketplace service to prompt game pass purchase. And then from here, we can plug the player, the player variable, and then the ID of your game pass, which I already have here. I have an example one. Now, if we go into base play, click play here. Turn around, head over here and hold E. It'll prompt our uh, game pass and we can purchase it. So the second way we're going to be selling a game pass to the player is with this part here. So when a player walks over a part, it's going or this part, it's going to prompt them the game pass to purchase it. So to do this, we're going to create a local script within our started UI, started pack, or started player. It doesn't really matter. Any of the services work. We're going to define our marketplace service which we will be using to prompt the player the game pass. So get service, marketplace service. From there, we're going to create three more variables. One which should be our player. Another one which should be our debounce, which I'll explain soon. We're just going to set it to false by default. And then we're going to get the actual part in the workspace. So game, dot workspace. You, and then we're going to use wait for child, touch example. So that gets our part in the workspace, this here. From there, we're going to go down to line seven. I'm going to uh, reference our part that we defined. And we're going to use the touch function, connect function. And the cool thing about the touch function is it actually returns back what's touching that part. So let's say the player walked over the part, it will return us, the, let's say the left leg or the right leg, whatever was walking on, onto the part. So, and we're just going to call that hit. If I wrote print hit here, like once again, if the player walks over the part, it'll print most likely one of their legs. From there, we actually need to check that the legs of that player is a real player, uh, the person playing the game. I'm going to do hit the parent, and we're going to use find first child here, which is going to check within the player if a humanoid exists. And that's how we're going to check that it's an actual player. We're also going to check the player walking over this part is the same person behind the screen playing the game. So we're going to also do end. If hit.parent, 
dot name. So if the, same, if the name of the character in the game is the same as our player, so player dot name, got two equals there. Then we can continue. From there, we're going to check if our debounce is false. I'll explain once again uh, in a second. And then from there, we're going to set our debounce to true. We're going to use marketplace service. We're going to prompt a purchase to the player. And then we also need our game pass ID, which we I've already set up earlier, which we can put there. Then we're going to wait a cooldown of, let's say, five seconds. And we're going to set our debounce to false. Now, let me explain what a debounce is. A debounce is a way we can add a cooldown for, for things. So for example, let's say the player walked onto this part. Every time they make, let's say even one slight movement, it's gonna prompt them the game pass again. And not having that cooldown, it's just gonna spam game passes onto their screen. And we don't want that. So how we're gonna do this is we're making a variable. We're checking if, the, if is our debounce actually false, this variable. If it's false, then we're gonna set it to true, prompt it. And we're going to wait five seconds and set the false. Now, what this, once again, what this is doing, let's say the first time they walk onto it, it's actually going to prompt it. And then let's say the second time they walk onto it, if it hasn't been five seconds, it's not going to prompt it again. So it's going to add a, that cooldown of five seconds and then prompt it. So now if we go here and click play, walk onto our pad, game pass pops up and we can purchase it. The third way we'll be prompting the Game Pass to a player is with a button in our UI. So we're going to head over here to start a GUI, create a screen GUI. Um, I'm just going to call this UI and then inside that we're going to create a text button. Now in this year, video, I won't be focusing on making it look nice and fancy. It's just going to be functional. So what I'm going to do is actually center our, our button to the middle of the screen with 0 0.5 by 0 0.5 on the X and Y axis. And I'm going to go back to our anchor point set that to 0 0.5 to 0 0.5 and that's going to center our button in the middle of the screen you can mess around with the sizes with scale or offset but it doesn't really matter in this tutorial i'm just going to be once again going over functionality i'll set text scaled here and i'll change the text to let's say purchase sword now once again you can position this part however you want put whatever text you want I'm going to create a local script within here and let's actually get to the scripting. So first thing I'm going to do is define our marketplace service, which we'll be using to prompt the game pass to the player. Uh, so we're going to use marketplace service like so. And this will give, like I said, uh, when we're going to use this service to actually prompt the game pass. From there, we're going to define our player. So game.players.localplayer. Then we're going to define the UI itself, so the actual interface that's on our screen. We're going to use uh, the script, so we're going to get the script here, and then we're going to get the parent of the script, which is our UI. And then from there, we can go down to line 5, we can type UI, and then we're going to get the text button within the UI, which is this here. That's our button, this thing here. And then from there, we're going to use the mouse button one click function, sorry, event. And then from there, we are going to create the function and this is going to run any code within this function is going to run when they click this button so if i click this button um it's going to run this code here and the code we're going to be putting here is actually our game pass so prompt game pass purchase we plug our player into here and then the second parameter it needs is the game pass id so i already have one set up from earlier if we go here and click play now Purchase sword, game pass pops up, and that's a UI game pass. Okay, so I hope those three methods I showed you of selling a game pass to a player helped out. Um, just one last thing before we finish off here, I actually want to show you how to check if a player earns a game pass. So most of the time you want to do this in the service script. So let's define our marketplace service service marketplace service and then from here we can just do marketplace service user earns game pass to sync and then from here we can actually pass the player so let's say we already had the player uh, predefined the player.user id and then the actual game pass like so and then you can just do an if statement from here or you can create it or turn it into a variable so let's say earns uh, sword like that and then you can do if earn sword 
then and then give them the sword and that's pretty much how you check if a user earns the game pass besides that i hope you guys uh, enjoyed the video and like and subscribe